Hey, what's up guys? Today we've got a cool new flip for you. This dresser was a piece that my client had asked me to refinish and he had wanted such a pretty green color to match the rest of his space. So keep on watching to the end to see how it turns out. It was in pretty good shape, it was all solid wood, it had these cool circular handles that I've never seen before, but it didn't match my client's style, so we're gonna change them up. As always, we're just gonna be removing the hardware first so that I can um, get around it and get, get it clean. And this screwdriver is a really good tool to have around in the shop, because you've got all your little bits just stored in the, in the, shank, in the, stored in the front, in the back, stored in the back. Okay, so that's one. After the hardware was all off, I cleaned everything with some crud cutter and also this fun little drill attachment. It's actually not my favorite way to clean since the drill gets a little bit heavy for me, but it gets it really clean. Whenever you're using a degreaser, always check the label to see if you need to rinse it off with water, and in my case, I had to. I had heard online about this product called liquid sandpaper and it's supposed to be a deglosser and some people like to use it to replace scuff sanding, so I bought some and gave it a try. It smelled pretty bad so I reached for my respirator, but in the end I was afraid it wasn't enough for this thick factory coating, so I just scuff sanded anyway with my orbital sander. I'm using Bondo, which is a car filler, to fill in my hardware holes and any other large flaws. It's super heavy duty and it dries pretty quick, so if you're using this product, then try to work as fast as you can. Since Bondo dries super hard, it takes a little bit longer to sand than normal filler, but it doesn't shrink or crack, which is always nice. I enlisted Kendall's help to tilt the dresser up so I could get a really good sand on the bottom edge since my sander was too big to fit under there. There was a lot of visible grain on the top, and I like to fill those in with a mixture of water and wood filler to really smooth out the surface. Sometimes you'll see little dings that look like no big deal, but once you put paint on it, you'll be able to see it a lot more, and so will your clients. Dings and cracks that they might not have seen before will come to light, so you want to try to fix as much as you can. An inspection light can really help you to see everything so you know what to fix. to prime this dresser and I'm using my tried and true kills primer to cover everything up and I'm paying special attention to parts where I've sanded down to the bare wood. Kills is great for this because since it's oil based it'll block any wood tannins that want to come through and affect your paint later. Okay, so my client has asked me to um, try to match the color of his cabinets, which are an Bodart IKEA green. color called Bow Dark Green. Um, and instead of going online and trying to find like a good color match, because um, it was kind of hard to find actually. But anyway, we're gonna color match it by going to IKEA. And we picked up this little drawer front that's in the same color, and we're just gonna go to the paint. And we're just gonna go to the um, paint section and then get them to color match this. So that's a trick. Very 
<laughs> it ran out. No. It's here, it's here. I think. So we just matched. <laughs> yeah, we just matched it. So, yeah. today is pretty good. Sometime, I cut my hole a little bit. Sure. See you later. Can I do it? Oh my god. It's the next day now and I'm sanding down the primer with my detail sander with a foam pad to knock off any dust and smooth out the surface. This is really important to do after any primer but especially ones from a spray can. The kills dries a little bit rough so sanding it down is essential. So now we're going in with our new color matched paint and we're using Bear's Alkid Satin Enamel which is actually a furniture paint with a built in top coat. We're spraying the color on today so if you're doing the same, make sure to strain it to get any clumps out. Close up the can and we're ready to go. This is two coats on the dresser and the paint actually dried really hard and it looks really durable so I'm really liking this formula from Bear. And since the top coat's already built in, we can skip poly and go straight into hardware. So now it's time uh, to measure the hardware holes. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape down around near the center. And now I'm just going to measure the center point by measuring both the width and then also the height. So. So this is 22 and a quarter, so I'm going to go 11 and an eighth. Okay, now I'm going to measure the height. So this is the height, six and a half. I'm going to go three and a quarter. Now I'm just going to connect the two, and that is your center point. So my client has chose these poles, so I can't just go with a center point. I have to measure these two out. So the, this is five inches apart. So from the center point, I need to measure out two and a half inches this way and two and a half inches out this way. So line it up and I'm going to go two and a half this way. So that would be two and a half, two and a half. So now I like to use this pointy screwdriver thing, um, put it where the holes are and that'll just make a mark. And then what that'll do is it'll prevent your drill bit from slipping. Now we're going to drill. Put them in through the other side. Okay, and then grab your screwdriver. So now the dresser is all done and it's such a far cry from how it started. We changed up that old brown finish and transformed it into a stunning modern piece of furniture. That color is so pretty and how about those poles guys? They're so good. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you want to keep up with me. That's all from me today. Thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you in the next one.